Are you still at it? I guess we're gonna have to go ahead anyway. Lolly McNaughton here. Today we're reading Hamish the Hairy Haggish, written by A.K. Patterson, illustrated by Stuart Martin. That sounds like a good Scott. What is a haggis? A question asked by many. However, the question should not be what, but who? Here we are in Scotland, in a place called Inverhaggis. You ever been there? It's Hogmanay and everyone in Scotland is very happy. Everyone that is, apart from Hamish the Hairy Haggis. There he is, you see him? Quite some ears, ain't they? Hamish the Hairy Haggis lives on a steep hill in the highlands of Scotland. The dawn of the new year means a big noisy party for nearly all the Scots. For Hamish, Hogmanay is the start of many days keeping his head down, hiding in a deep dark hall. Hogmanay marks the start of the Haggis Bashan season. Don't know about you, but that sounds dreadful. Hamish has been in the hall for ages. He has long finished eating all his thistle sandwiches and having a beverage with it. Hamish is on the last page of his one and only book. He is very bored and hungry and wants to go out to play. Is that what you look like when you're bored? The hairy haggis bashers are usually very noisy, so Hamish listens hard at the opening of the hall. It seems to be quiet outside. Maybe the haggis bashers have gone home for the day, thinks Hamish. He decides to leave the hall in search of more thistles to make sandwiches. <sniffs> Big mistake. Poor Hamish. As Hamish sticks his head through a hole, a great hammer hits him very hard on the head. The hairy haggis basher has been hiding in the heather. Hamish is in big trouble now. Dear, look at the size of that hammer. It's almost the same size as his head. The haggis basher carries Hamish down the hill and heads for his home in Inverhaggis. So there he is, bringing Hamish along. Got to go all the way through the streets here to get to his house in Inverhaggis. Hamish wakes up and finds himself in a cage. Beside him in the cage are some very smelly turnips called napes and some very dirty old potatoes known as tatties. Hamish is a bit groggy but climbs over a neep to peep through the bars of the cage. What he sees in the vast room beyond him makes him tremble with fear. This must be the ancient ceremony that his grandfather Harry, the even hairier haggis, once told him about. The Burns Supper. In the big room, hairy haggis bashers and mashers are dancing together. The mashers wear long, colourful skirts, and the bashers wear short, colourful skirts. To his horror, Hamish sees that one of the bashers is wearing his grandfather, Harry, tied round his middle. Good heavens, that's Hamish's grandfather right there. It's terrifying. Hamish's grandfather was the great chieftain of the pudding race. And there he is. Didn't he look handsome? Robbie Burns, it seems, was the really big chief of all the hairy haggis bashers and mashers. He was the most feared enemy of haggis everywhere. Hamish knows he must escape from the cage. He tries to think of a plan. Then, from the vast hall comes a cry, bring in the haggis, bring in the haggis. 
that right there is Robbie Burns. That's who Hamish has to be afraid of. Hamish begins to shake even more when he hears these words. On the day of his fifth birthday, his grandfather, Harry the Harrier Haggis, and the great chieftain of the pudding race, told him all about the Haggis bashers and their very odd ways. Harry told Hamish that if he ever heard the words Rabbi Burns, he should run for his life. There he is, getting all the scoop. The screeching music stops. Well, not here, obviously. And the bashers and mashers sit down at long tables. The chief haggis basher stands up and starts to shout loudly in a language that Hamish did not understand. After a very long time, the big chief raises his glass and everyone begins chanting, Rabbi Burns! There they are, raising their glasses to Rabbi Burns. Hamish sees one of the hairy haggis bashers pick up what looks like a baby haggis basher. He blows on one of its spindly legs and from the baby haggis basher comes a horrible high-pitched howling. Well, somebody missed their cue back there, didn't they? The terrible noise makes Hamish and the tatties cover their ears. Luckily for the neeps, they don't have ears, so can't hear the awful wailing. Oh, there we go. What do you think about the wailing in the background? Hamish remembers something else his grandfather Harry told him. When you hear the horrible howling, leg it. Leg it, leg it, thinks Hamish, as he kicks a neep with all his strength. The neep hurtles towards the bars. It smashes a hole in the side of the cage and Hamish jumps through it. Oh, that sounds exciting. Hamish makes his escape. Sounds like a good Highlander to me. Hamish runs for his life through an open door. The bashers and mashers chase after him. Meanwhile, the smelly neeps and the dirty old tatties also escape through the hole in the cage. The bashers and mashers trip over the neeps and tatties. They end up in a tangled and colourful heap. Look, there they are, aiding and abetting his escape. And there he is, running on down the street. Perhaps Amish is pretty clever after all. Hamish is nearly caught by one of the bashers, but luckily, Harry, Hamish's grandfather, springs to life. Look at that. Wraps his legs round the bashers and ankles and trips him up. Look at that. Hamish heads for the hills. The bashers are close behind and nearly catch him. Hairy haggis have two very long back legs and two very short front legs, which means they can run very fast up hills. As soon as Hamish sets foot on the hill, he knows he'll be safe. Hamish is nearly at the very top of the hill while the bashers are still at the bottom. They are out of breath and very angry. Hamish sends a traditional haggis greeting to the bashers. I think he's not afraid now. A few hours later, the hairy haggis bashers and mashers have given up the hunt for Hamish. In the kitchen of the big hall, they mix together some very strange ingredients in a huge bowl. Do you see all those weird things? I don't think you even want to know what they are. Don't be asking. Later, they sit down and try to pretend to their guests that this odd gooey mess is a real haggis. But I think you can tell by the looks on their faces that that's not what they're used to. Looks disgusting. 
Hamish warms up some thistle soup. He didn't have the appetite for the basher stew. He is very happy knowing that he is safe from the hairy haggis bashers until next year. There he is having his soup. There he is feeling all safe. So, now you know the true story of a Hamish the hairy haggis. And there he goes with his neeps and tatty friends. I hope you like this story. Stay tuned. You never know when there's going to be more.